Hi, oh, yeah, it's Jackie here with the LGFA, and we're looking ahead to TG Cahar All Ireland Senior Championship semi final weekend in the company of former intercounty stars Michelle Ryan from Waterford and Galway's Emer Flaherty. Ladies, how are we doing? Great. All oh, good, thanks. Uh, Michelle, you're just back from Croatia, is it? I am, yeah. I didn't get burned out there. It was fairly hot out there, 33 degrees, but I think oh. I was lucky compared to what's going on in Italy and Greece at the minute. Um, but yeah, lovely holiday, relaxing now last week and currently up in the northwest, beautiful Donegal for a few days okay. as well before getting back to action this weekend. Yeah. Living the dream, Michelle, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> we won't, we unfortunately can't have Quiva Marty Morgan on today. Um, one of her, her, her wee man is a bit sick today, so we pass on our best wishes. But Kerry and Dublin are her picks for the weekend. And she says, still Kerry to win the big one. Right, so we'll get stuck into it. Michelle, she for O'Shea. Um, yeah. ACL, unfortunately for the second time, the other knee, uh, heart goes out to her, incredible player. A player I followed since I watched her score a hat-trick in an All-Ireland Under-16 final, neither today nor yesterday, but quite recent, you know, she's still a very young player. Is this a game-changer, Michelle, in terms of, of, of this semi-final against Mayo on Saturday? Um, well, first of all, I want to wish her all the best of luck because, you know, Absolutely. anyone going through that kind of a rehab and an injury, first of all, the mental blow it is, an emotional blow it is, especially at this stage of, of the year and championship, I suppose, where Kerry have come from and where it does look like they're going as well. It, it's, a, it's a massive blow on her being captain. And I think sometimes we forget how young she actually is. I mean, I was involved in a monster post-primary schools um, panel just before COVID hit actually and she was one of the girls on it her and the likes of Erica O'Shea and Katie Quirk who are now you know established names in ladies football and such a lovely quiet unassuming girl absolute diehard passion for football you could see that even though she wouldn't be the most talkative but to see her now captaining Kerry at this, such a young age and really after Settling into that role as both, you know, on and off the field in her performances, and then to get that blow after after coming back from an injury, that's incredibly tough to take. And I suppose my gut instinct is that I'm not sure it's quite the hammer blow for them this weekend. It will be absolute. It will have a massive impact. It will no doubt. I I think it might be more detrimental should they come out this weekend and they're going towards all Ireland final because. I mean, looking back over their game against Meath, I was looking back just doing a little bit of uh, preparation for this weekend. And while we all know Shif Roche to be an incredible scoring talent um, and just very skillful at the ball, very good vision. I mean, if you look back in that game and you look back when, when Kerry are defending and Meath are, are, were inside the, their half, the, the Kerry half and Meath are attacking, she Roche is always to be seen back in that half of the pitch just as much as she is up front. She's on the edge of the pitch or she's in the middle of the tackles or she's she's there, the link player, to get the ball up the field. So there, there's a lot of work that she does that has nothing got to do with being on a scoreboard. Um, and I think that's where, you know, there will be a little bit of a gap at times. But hopefully, I think Kerry have instilled in their team this level of work rate, which we've seen has been incredible. Um, their half forward line, especially, and the likes of she friend, their midfield have been so instrumental in everything that they've been doing. Um, that whoever comes in and whoever gets that position, maybe the likes of Danielle O'Leary, possibly in it with a show to start now. These after that, but I, I don't see the work rate slipping. Um, I and I think they, I think I can still see them overcoming Mayo this weekend. Um, but I think maybe just in a few weeks' time, then should they get to Not Ireland, how her loss might impact might be the question. But look, this weekend is the main focus at the, at the minute. Yeah, and we echo those sentiments, Michelle. It's a devastating injury for Schaefer. Unfortunately, she has experience of going through this rehab before, so it's not going to be unfamiliar territory for her, but we pass on our best wishes um, to Schaefer. And yeah, an absolute testament to how highly regarded she is, Michelle, that she's captain of that team at such a young age as well. Mm. Um, so it's uh, it's Kerry against Mayo first up at five o'clock on um, Saturday, followed by Cork and Dublin at 7.30 p.m. On Saturday at FBD Sample Stadium in Tardis, both games live on TG Cahar. Emer, I'll bring you back to um, uh, 
the quarterfinal predictions. Um, so you said Donegal would beat Dublin. You said Cork would beat Armagh. You were spot on. You said Kerry would win, and you were spot on. And Galway against Mayo, unfortunately, from a Galway perspective, no. Um, Michelle, you had a full house. You went with um, Dublin, My crystal Cork. ball is back intact. <laughs> Dublin, Cork, Kerry and Mayo. Um, Emer, can I ask you about Galway and, and how things will have been or what, what, what sense you're getting from the camp now that obviously the, the, the season has ended? Um, I was at the game and from where I was looking, I thought the ball had actually been fisted into the net, but then it kind of dawned on everyone that she had actually fisted over because we were at pitch level. Uh, that Sean had fisted over the bar to lose in that in those circumstances, Eamon. There was only seconds left. I mean, well, how are Galway since and how are those players must be feeling? Yeah, Jackie, I suppose look like us all, we were it was the uh, ending was just crazy. But um as I said earlier, like really the game was kind of just littered with mistakes from both sides. You couldn't say that um either team really you know showed huge form um to to go on and to, to be victorious i thought galway might have snatched it in the end you know you're thinking they had possession um the last minute of the game they were um you know going up the pitch or it was either that or maybe ended in a draw and you know unfortunately just that um miss hand pass that that's a killer blow and um it just credit to, to Mayo they marched on you know they've shown how they managed to get at the end of it and, and pop it over the bar but um a killer way to to lose you know Galway after having overcome Cork and you know getting on top of the group um you know can't have been happy with with that kind of performance and Mayo now are are going in ahead. I suppose looking at Mayo's performances and over the last few years, they've been in the last three semi-finals. So, um, you know, at the start of the year, I suppose no one really ever considers them as as runners um, for for the All Ireland title. But you know, they have been there, and um, you know, coming up against um, Kerry now, I suppose, and after obviously Kerry being given the killer blow with um, the loss to Fro Shea, they'll probably. You know, just try and um, develop on that resilience that they have shown, and um, just try and eke out that win against Kerry. And from what you've seen, Emer, are Mayo good enough to go toe to toe with Kerry? When you consider this the Kerry team that beat Galway well in the National League final, and you know showed good form last time out against Mead as well, I, there, there might be a suspicion that this is it is. It's it's a very obvious statement to make. It's a big step up for 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 Mayo to win against Kerry now. Um, what yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know what I, I suppose. What you have seen of Mayo is that they're, you know, they do seem to have a really good balance now. They've um, a lot of you saw Eva actually getting player of the match there the the last day. You know okay, they've got yeah. um, a great kind of spread of experience. Obviously Fiona McHale is still leading leading there from um, centre back. You know they they do have the younger players being brought on, so they they have used the bench well and and. They are, um, you know, shown should pan, good panel strength. But I suppose with 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 Kerry, like uh, Michelle said, it's obviously such a huge blow, and you know your heart would go out to Chief Roche. But what you could say from a panel, I suppose they've had a few days to kind of gather themselves again. And when you see a blow like that coming, I suppose it either galvanizes a team or, um, you know, they 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 fall to it. But from what you've seen of Kerry, I'd, I'd imagine that this would just have to drive them on and, um, you know, do they have a cause now? Obviously, they don't need a cause. They've they've enough in, I suppose, having been there last year in the final and losing out to me and that. But um, they, I would imagine, would be striving to push on. And I do think they they have, um, while Kerry or while Mayo have the maybe tenacity and they have that huge toughness and resilience uh, I think Kerry just have more football in them and you know there's the, the games there's been glimpses of oh, just such super football being played throughout the league and championship this year Amber, Before I go back to Michelle just one, one, one final question for now um, how, how big an, and can you equate it to anything from your own playing career I'm sure you can how big an influence can Schaefer still have within that dressing room even though she's injured Um. You know they won't want look. The rest of the players are they're they're players. They're players, and and that's what they do. They play right, so they'll try to 
uh, you know, absorb the loss of their teammate as best they can and just get on with their their soul condition to to doing what they do and and role yeah. clarity i presume in a, in, a, in, a, in a setup like that is so so high but how big an influence can Schaefer have as she is or was you know team captain can she still have a yeah. big play of course you can like that i suppose when you asking that question now and thinking back to 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 situations that that, that may have happened in the past i suppose it, it is a big it's a big blow you know you've obviously teams and panels have been dealt blows um throughout the years but there's nothing that really stands out that has had such huge impact it leading into such uh an important game you know at this stage of the the championship um but for for she for like as a 21 year old you know like it's it's a huge um task and i'm sure obviously it's going to be one a game that's going to be filled with emotion as well as drive and 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 all of the rest but um, you know, Kerry have had the had the blow of losing All Ireland final last year. You know, I yeah. think you know that, that builds a, an element of um, resilience as well, I suppose. And they, um, you know, she can just you know power them on and obviously be be such a, you know a huge stance in the dressing room and obviously on, on the on the line on Saturday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing her. She's there as well because um, it, it's it's just it's so sad for her. But we wish um, uh, she for well and looking forward to the game that lies in store. Michelle, do you have any experience of, of something like this happening so close to a game and how it you know, Amor says it can either galvanize a team or maybe derail them a little bit. What what's your suspicion here of what might what might happen? Yeah, I th- I think Emer is right. Um, because it has happened so close to the game, emotions are high and those emotions can be channeled positively. Yes. Um, and that's generally what can, tends to happen when, when something kind of, whether any form of disappointment or bad news can hit a panel, it can galvanize you for, for, quite, a, for quite a period of time. And like I said, it is a massive blow personally for Shifra, but Kerry aren't a one person team anymore than maybe that they were for quite a number of years. And that's a huge, I suppose, positive for them. It's a huge um, praise goes to the, the management team in that they have created a panel of players that is capable of finishing out games and being as strong as they were when they started. Um, and so it's just up to them. And I've no doubt we'll hear Dara Long and Declan Quill saying, look, it's a blow, but it's up for the next person to step up here now and to fill that spot and do it as, as well as Schieffer was doing. And Schieffer will expect that and she'll be telling that, per- that whoever that person is herself and She'll carry herself well, no bet, no doubt, throughout the week, and carry herself on the dress as an example in the dress room, despite whatever person hurt she's suffering. And, um, but that's that's the nature of sport. It's the nature of a team sport. It is about the team at the end of the day, and they have the the numbers there, and they have, I suppose, the atmosphere within their camp and the unity within their camp that they all know what they're going about, how they're going about it, and it's just up up to the next person to fill that spot and, and continue that work. Do you think, as uh, like Emer does, that Kerry will have enough still, um, Michelle? I, I I think they do. Looking at both teams, I mean, I was there for the the Mayo Galway game. Um, I, I think Emer's absolutely right. There was so many mistakes on both sides. I think Galway had so, to my mind, when we were working on the game, I felt like Galway were in control of it for large periods. They had so much possession. They looked more comfortable and more, had a little bit more conviction but at the same time couldn't convert that into scores and couldn't just push on to win the game and close it out. Mayo, to me, um, they just didn't have their best performance at all. I, 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 there was a lot of questions I had regarding them defensively because even though the numbers were getting back for Mayo, the numbers were there. Galway were able to manage little slip passes through the hands, intricate passes to get in close to goals and pick off their scores. So the numbers were there for Mayo, but no contact was being made. No responsibility was being taken at times that I have her, you have her, and this is who's free. Um, so jobs, I think, were being passed a little bit. And I actually felt, and I think I said it in commentary, that I thought their defence further up the pitch among their forwards was actually much more effective than it was back in their backs at times, um, that they were they were defending with intensity up in their forwards. Now, no doubt, to start the game, they missed the likes of Sean Howley and, of course, Lisa Caffrey, who both came on at the end. And obviously, Sean, I mean, could, could you ever score a more important point, possibly, considering he hadn't been on the game uh, starting team before that? And Lisa Caffrey didn't seem 100% to me when she came on. 
But having said that, she if you saw when that ball was dispossessed in the middle of the field for that last score, Mayo drove forward, four or five of them tore forward, Lisa Cafferkey being one of them. They all wanted to get up there. And you could see afterwards she wasn't entirely comfortable. So as to whether she starts for Mayo, that's a question for me because I think she brings so much dynamism and leadership and she kind of puppeteers things around the field a lot for Mayo when she's there and she's playing for 60 minutes and playing well. And I think they will need that because there was times they were lacking a lot in direction, moving up the field and trying to get scores. But having said that, and as Ema rightly mentioned, Aoife Garrity at midfield was powerful. She was the one person, I suppose, driving through. Um, and they will need that. You will need to go direct and quick against Kerry because Kerry will absolutely, on the counter, go direct and quick, and quick against you. And I think that's maybe where Mayo might fall down. Kerry are serious ball players when they get that ball up the pitch quickly. And I'm not sure if Mayo are going to have the capacity to close that down. Okay, so um, game two then, Michelle, is Cork and Dublin. Um, Game for, two, yeah. yeah. First time they've met in championships since 2020 final behind closed doors, I believe. But they met in plenty of finals prior to that. They met in the semi final last back in 2019. Um, it just feels like they haven't played each other in championship for for a while. I know it's obvious that they haven't since 2020, but it's just got that feel of a little bit of novelty again in Cork and Dublin. And um, look, uh, you're the expert here. I'm finding it hard to predict it. How? how what are you thinking? Uh, you're right. And you know why I think it feels like they're, we're coming to see two different Cork and Dublin teams play each other to us in a sense as well, um, because there have been a number of changes and personnel changes and so on. Um, and it, I, this is the tough one to predict for me, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I don't think either of them have been overly convincing to me this year. They've both shown weaknesses to my mind. Um, but in the last game, last few games, when they needed to do it, they, they got over the line. Um, I, I'll be honest, I think Dublin's game against Donegal, if you were to look at the scoreboard, you say, well, D Dublin were obviously the most stronger team. They were, but I thought Donegal's performance was poor. I, I really did. And I, I was expecting nothing less of Dublin. Um, I thought Donegal, you know, would bring a little bit more to that game. Um and it's no surprise to me that Donny Dublin came out as strong as they did in that. Um, with regards to Cork, I mean they 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 came over they came over the line against Armagh. I again, again I'm not sure how convincing that was. We know that Amy Macken was missing. We know that she's good for a good few scores for a good few scores, and I suppose. Kiro Sullivan stepped up to the mark. You know, and really needs they needed that leadership. I think it was five points she got. I, I just don't see either team have been clicking immensely um, and kind of convincingly. And that's where I'm struggling with this a little bit. With regards to Dublin, I think up front, I'm looking like Kate Sullivan is, is very, very dangerous. I actually personally would love to see her inside the full forward line with Hannah Tyrrell, just the two of them, and kind of feed them. Because um, Kate Sullivan is absolutely so fast and can round anybody like in the blink of an eye when she's on form and and we know Hannah Tyrrell has kind of become their go-to score getter as well um, and I think it was when Eve Hederson came on a half time two games ago that you know they were struggling to get things going going forward and they needed a target and she was pumping balls in there you know I just they're, they're settling but they're not overall settled to me Um. So it's a tough one for me. I'm edging Cork slightly. And I, I can't even tell you entirely why. Maybe it's just a gut instinct. Um, I think if it comes down to the nitty gritty, I think maybe they will have a little bit more up front, I think. Um, but I think this could go to the wire and I think we could be have a draw after 60 minutes, if I'm honest. Wow. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. It is. It's a difficult one to call, Emer. I mean, where are you falling on this one? It's it's. Yeah. Well, look. Sure. Obviously, I was way off with the prediction I um threw for the quarterfinal. I did think, um, like Michelle said, that Donegal, um, you know, didn't play well on the day at all. I thought they may have had, you know, a surprise. Um, you know, just it brought a shock to the to the to the table. Um, but then obviously Dublin, you know, just pulled away and and you know got a great score in the end but weren't overly convincing too um 
yeah, with with Cork, I really wasn't hugely impressed against with uh, with them against Armagh. I thought they would have had, um, you know, really just brought their A game to the to the table at this stage. You know, when you're looking at form on both sides, you know, I thought that they had you know been dealt the blow against Galway. Um, I thought they were very loose in defence. You know, there was two goals conceded. There, I think Blohy Mackin had a, a chance of another one in, in in the end. They just seemed a bit loose defensively. Um, so that could be an area that the Dublin exploit um, at the weekend. Um, yeah, it's. I suppose looking at the run of form in the last few years, I think I heard during the week there that Mick Bowen's actually never lost a, a championship match against Cork in his time in charge. So that was um, that was one for the, for the cards. But it's um, it's. I think it will come come down to the wire. Um, you know, the, I think the Cork were very reliant on on those Sullivans uh, on the day. Um, you know, he didn't get much. Um, help throughout the pitch. I just thought that they, they would have brought um, something more to the table. But then Dublin, you know, they do seem to have, um, obviously they've had such a, tra- a change in personnel throughout the year, but there's um, maybe, you know, the, the, the panel is there. Will they, you know, I to build on that and and bring uh, a good performance against Cork. Um, I, I'm kind of slightly pushing for for Dublin like this one now. You know, like after after going the opposite way the last time, and now Michelle with her crystal ball could could be right on the mark. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, it's it's really a hard one to call. Right, no more than the quarterfinals. We hear we're here in the semi final um, stages, and um, you know, I think it's it's anyone's it's anyone's final really at this stage. So you're edging towards Dublin Kerry final, Emer. I get the sense, and you're edging towards an all Munster final, Michelle. So we'll see how, yeah. So we'll see how that pans out um, mm-hmm. at the weekend, Michelle. Just to, to wrap it up with your good self. Obviously, we spoke the last time about um, we, well, we spoke recently about Waterford, and and obviously the relief now to stay up must be must be immense down there. After what was a, a positive campaign, Michelle. Um. Yeah, relief is definitely the word. I word I know. So there was a good bit of disappointment after you know losing the the first round relegation to Tipperary, which you know it went to to, to free kicks. Um, that's not good for your heart now at all when you're watching that kind of a thing. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, yeah. But look, the game against Cavan, you know, all it was was a task that had to be fulfilled, and and they said stepped up to the task because you know, there was no second chances after that, and. I suppose I'd be I'd been commenting throughout the year that my concern with Watford was the lack of scores they were putting on the scoreboard and this was the day to do it and they scored one nineteen um to, to to Cavan's nine points and um look with regards to Watford it's job done and I know we've mentioned a lot about a good campaign but I suppose you can't as the campaign progressed Jackie you know it it, it didn't get better for Watford and we can't we can't overly dwell too much on maybe what was a good league at the end of the day the championship is where it's at and Watford would be disappointed that they didn't perform maybe to the level that they thought they could have and they, I know that we've been competitive in championships right up along I think just that level of consistency maybe is what's missing a little bit um, I mean, you're going from what three since 2017, we've reached three quarterfinals and we've equally played in three relegation playoffs, you know, in that time as well. So I think maybe what that shows as well, though, is the top, there is a gap between what are the top eight and maybe the, the, the rest, the four, the remaining four. And it can be hard to kind of bridge that gap. And um, it, it's up to the to the waterfers, to the tips, to the leash, and whoever will come up now from from intermediate, like to to keep ploughing away at that. Um, but look, definitely from a Waterford perspective, it, it's it's relief. That's definitely the main feeling. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll see um, who will come up. Um, obviously, in a couple of weeks' time as well. Michelle Clare against Kildare in the intermediate final, and Limerick will play down in the junior final. We'll find out at the weekend who will be joining them from the senior. Uh, semi-finals it's Kerry against Mayo at 5 o'clock FBD Semple Stadium Hurlis on Saturday followed by Dublin Cork at 7.30pm both live on TG Cahar uh, Emer Flaherty and Michelle Ryan thank you so much for your time today and have a lovely evening thank you thank you thanks bye, bye.